Mars are wide, short volcanic craters formed when hot magma rises through rocks laden with groundwater and explodes. This photo shows two Mars craters forming in Alaska in 1977. Mars diatreme volcanoes are different to normal Mars volcanoes. Imagine a succession of consolidating sedimentary rocks at sea level during the Jurassic period. Thick sandstone layers shown in yellow are porous and full of groundwater. The other layers include shoals and coal measures of various ages. Hot basaltic magma rises from below, hits the water and blasts a mixture of superheated steam and rock fragments to the surface. Rocks are flung high into the air with a loud roar. Around the side, a ma ring develops. Ma diatreme volcanoes are described as carrot or trumpet shape. The volcanic rock is a breccia, a mixture of broken fragments of volcanic lava and sedimentary rocks. Eventually during the eruption, much of the water is used up. There are sloping, V-shaped layers at the top and magma which plugs the bottom of the vent. We go back in time to visit the Hawkesbury Sandstone Formation at Kernel, where Cook landed in 1770. It is 240 million years old and formed just 12 million years after the Great Dying, which killed 90% of marine species and 70% of land species on the planet. To the south, it is part of the Warrenora Plateau. On the north side of the harbour, it forms the Hornsby Plateau. We call it the Hawkesbury Sandstone because it was first described there and is up to 300 metres thick. The building of the Sydney-Newcastle Freeway starting in the 1960s was a massive engineering feat. The Hornsby Plateau is cut by numerous wooded valleys that lead to Barara Creek on the left which winds its way northeast to the Hawkesbury River. Our area of interest in this latest aerial photo is the white area on the top right, the site of the Hornsby Volcano in a place originally called Old Man's Valley. Here is modern Hornsby next to its rail line. The original depth of the valley is shown by the grassy green areas. The blue metal quarry here is shown in the foreground, has ceased excavation and is closed to the public. For perhaps 40,000 years, Aboriginal people of the Darug, Karingai and Darkingung clans moved through this area. Old Man's Valley was a special place. It contained a freshwater spring, a huge variety of plants growing in the fertile volcanic soil, and the wallaby and kangaroo that they hunted. The first Europeans to live in this area was the family of Thomas Higgins, the son of a second fleet convict. He was granted land in 1824. Three generations of Higgins established saw pits, saw mills, orchards and market gardens. Their graves are found in a small cemetery on the edge of the valley. Thomas is believed to have invented the name Old Man's Valley because of the old man kangaroos that roamed the area. 
Foundation Professor of Geology at Sydney University, Sir Tennant William Edgeworth David, achieved fame when he reached the South Magnetic Pole with Mawson and Mackay. The professor discovered a number of coal seams and popularised geology. He retired to a weatherboard house called Karinga at Hornsby, whose gardens can be visited today. One of his last projects was to encourage an impoverished government to back Bradfell's vision for a harbour bridge. It was completed in 1932. David died just two years later and was buried as a hero in Sydney's biggest state funeral. The Edgeworth David Geology Building trained world-class geologists for decades using substantial rock, fossil and slide collections, maps, libraries and microscopes. Its geologists managed to locate dozens of Jurassic volcanic vents, including a number of Ma diatremes, of which the biggest was at Hornsby. Both are Sydney's first geologist, the Reverend William Brandwhite Clark and Professor Edgeworth David studied the Bondi Ma Diatrim volcano. Today it has almost eroded away. Attempting to walk on this clay material will lead to death. I believe that this thin intrusion is just the root of an intrusion that extended much higher. The heat at depth has metamorphosed the Hawkesbury sandstone to a metamorphic rock called quartzite. These have formed columnar joints as it cooled. This white marble was valued by builders and much has been removed. The volcanic breccia as expected in a Mar diatreme volcano, is a mixture of volcanic rock plus sandstone fragments. Geologist E.T. Kenny studied the volcanic breccia of the Ebbett Park diatreme in 1929. Unfortunately, it has been covered by the usual playing fields but some hard metamorphosed sandstone survives in a quarry near the cricket nets. I visited the Minchinbury Diatreme Quarry in 1965. It was the most impressive volcanic crater that I have seen in New South Wales. The swirling violence of the blast through the Wynamata Group rocks could be seen in the walls of the intrusion. Here the hole is being filled with Sydney's rubbish. The process is almost complete. Waste disposal cannot be ignored by our struthiest politicians. Dr Germaine Joplin was one of the legends of Australian geology. She was a petrologist who collected specimens of igneous and metamorphic rocks from all over Australia. She ground down rock samples to paper thickness and observed them using a petrological microscope which used crossed nickel prisms to produce interference colours. This is Gabbro, a plutonic rock. Her book is called A Petrography of Australian Igneous Rocks. This is her diagram of the Hornsby Breccia. It contains bits of quartz, felspar, trachytic basalt fragments in a cement of volcanic glass. There was also bits of coal and carbon-rich material. We do our detective work on these specimens. The sharp, angular fragments of lava indicate an explosive eruption. The grey is a fast cooling volcanic glass that cemented the fragments together as they fell back into the crater. The black bits contain carbon. These big sandstone pieces were shattered in the blast and form part of the breccia. 
the top red arrow points to the lava bits. The second arrow points to coal fragments. Some of them contain Jurassic pollen and give us an age for the blast. Notice the grey black glassy cement seems to form shiny rounded nodules. Quarrying began in the early 1900s on land purchased from the Higgins family. It is the nature of quarries to go down like a big corkscrew and widen with time. The original mine started on the level of the green grass, some 91 metres short of the Hawkesbury sandstone plateau. Tough men smashed rocks and loaded them onto a cart drawn by two big draft horses up a rough track. By the 1920s, the Hawkesbury Road Metal Company was using steam power, first on a rail line, then in a bucket chain. The usual Wall Street suspects triggered a stock market crash in 1929, causing worldwide misery and the collapse of democracy in Germany. Now major banks collapsed and there was savage unemployment. There was no money for food, let alone rocks. The only work in the valley was for men constructing bush paths working for the dole. Starting in 1954, quarrying began in earnest. Blue metal was used as hard ballast to support wooden or concrete sleepers under railway tracks. Mixed with tar, it formed bitcher pave used to surface roads on the new highway. In 2002, the quarry ran out of economic blue metal and was handed back to the Hornsby Council. The place was unsafe. Children could fall in and drown. There were frequent landslides involving weathering breccia and sandy clay sediments. The place was fenced off and overgrown with weeds. The walls of the 44 hectare quarry were carefully studied for clues about its formation. It seems to be a complex of not one but three different diatremes. The eastern face is the simplest to observe. Can you see the U-shaped layers formed as ejector slumped back into the crater? This rock face is more complex. How is it different? Can you see a U-shape here? In 2016, the decision was taken to truck in sandstone waste from the new underground fast train rail tunnels. It was an engineering feat and has taken three years. Let us hope that the environmental scientists are fully supported in the complex work of bringing the valley back to a natural state. Mm -hmm.